For the last couple of years, Asus greatly raised in terms of laptop series. They've got affordable and stylish VivaBooks, ZenBook Ultrabooks, gaming machines from ROG, Strix and Tough. The first view on them actually makes clear about their target audience and outcoming features. But recently the company has got an update with decisions for close to art people, so to say content creators. The new devices are called Studio Books, come with a brand name ProArt and have a wide hint on the range of activities for that kind of laptops. Please meet W700 and its full name Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 17. Almost close in number of words to show me me in ear headphones Pro HD2. Almost. Welcome to Techfellas, my name is Bogdan, let's take into it. First of all, Asus definitely decided to crack the stereotype that says powerful laptop should be thicker than a brick and louder than an angle grinder. This model doesn't look like a desktop box with a battery and a screen, its thickness is only 18.4 mm. Unless you can't call it a lightweight accessory for a handbag, cause it weighs almost 2.4 kg and is larger than 15-inch MacBook Pro of year 17. The that effect I can forgive easily because laptop has 17 inch screen, which we will cover a bit later. Such a lightweight as for a laptop came out not only due to a low profile of the body, but also by wide choice of materials. At first look, or rather at the first touch, it may seem that body of W700 is made of plastic, but I'm way wrong saying that. If you slide your hand through the keyboard frame, you won't feel a metallic coolness just because the body is partially made of magnesium alloy, which is lighter and stiffer than aluminum. By the way, someone really tried to make sure that it's not plastic before giving that laptop to us. Let me grab your attention to different kind of holes and openings on the body. These are not speakers made by 5.1 standard, gentlemen. This is a part of a top-notch cooling system. So to say it's efficient, but do not hurry to throw away your Chinese cooling stand with a fan. After all, it's never too much air. At least your processor thinks that way. It's definitely capable to maintain the temperature temperature of hardware within normal range for quiet alone. At the same time, coolers do not make helicopter level of noises, which is also very important. The workspace obtains a glass touchpad with an integrated number pad. It seems that the lack of physical digital keyboard is solved, but in fact looking at how much space is left by the sides, I don't believe in difficulty of placing the additional three columns of buttons. The keyboard itself is comfortable, there is a backlight with three levels of brightness, which is more than one, and much more than none, so by standards of Windows laptops, everything is not even close to bad. Something trivial you will spot within ports that I cannot call bad either. Two interesting things are that Ethernet port is absent in laptop but present in the box, and the card reader is powerful enough to pass up to 312 MB per second, which is just great. A few words about the subtle things that make work with laptop more enjoyable. Firstly, the hinges of the lid, they are a bit rough and hold, and I'd like them to be softer but still, you can easily catch the exact angle when everything on the screen is visible without glares. Secondly, the indicators. They are neatly placed in the grabbing bevel, and if in W730 model while you're working you barely see them, which is definitely cool, here LEDs are exposed, but even in the dark your eyes won't scream of this backlight. Besides, you don't need to search for them when the laptop is closed, so you will always understand whether it's charged or in a sleep mode. The screen here is surely good. You notice that we make a lot of comparisons with Apple products, so StudioBook Pro 17 is a worthy opponent to MacBook Pro, for instance. So DCI-P3 range is covered here by 97%, the color difference from true Delta E is less than 1.5, approved by Penton. The aspect ratio is 16 by 10, not 16 by 9, and not even 2 by 1. Bye-bye widescreen lovers. Such decision makes a work in editing apps more comfortable, and from the experience with MacBooks I confirmed that it really matters. Also, have you forgot the true photo aspect ratio is generally 4x3, so a wide format for such a device would be less useful. Now about the quality, the screen is gorgeous, colors are all in the right places, no problem with backlight, color hues or lousy viewing angles. The refresh rate here is 60Hz, that is ok, 120 to 40 and so on are simply not needed here. But I would enjoy a 4K screen of course, unless in our case it is 1920 by 1200. 
frankly, Full HD. In terms of hardware, the laptop comes in two options of processor, Intel Xeon E2276M and Core i7-9750H. The amount of RAM can be up to 64 gigs. as for the storage, up to 4 terabytes formed by a RAID 0 set of SSD. So to say, we were lucky to get a top spec sample. However, not without a drill. In graphics, there should have been Nvidia Quadro RTX 3000 Max-Q with 6 gigs. Instead, we deal with T2000 module with 4 gigs. No time to write complaints, so keep in mind that your local stores will have more efficient version of W700. Speaking of performance, in testing purposes we decided to run a special project in Premiere Pro for all powerful laptops and compare the export speed. So StudioBook Pro 17 dealt with it in 46 minutes and 47 seconds. For instance, ZenBook Pro Duo with RTX 2060 made it in 47 minutes. And finalizing with Premiere Pro, Warp Stabilizer processed 25 seconds video fragment in 6 minutes and 10 seconds. Be sure to subscribe to catch all all of these tests. I will leave details in the description box. In games, everything is quite simple and expected. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order runs on 60 FPS, which occasionally drop and then restore its number. Frankly, this interactive movie on W700 looks almost perfect. I have no complaints, but I probably won't play it anymore. Call of Duty World War II on a cold computer also pleases with more or less stable picture, but when metal becomes warm, 60 frames per second you can see only as an exception. The numbers mostly jump back and forth, although visually everything looks the same way smooth. All that is relevant for the first hour and a half of the game. Under loads, device warms up, but not critically, given no hand burn, and it's still comfortable to work with it. Benchmark tests, as you see, are not quite glad about this cooling system, but your eyes won't lie if you see the performance remains stable. At least in the beginning, the slowdowns begin after more than three, maybe even four hours. The heating shows itself in abrupt drops in frames. In Call of Duty, FPS not only swing occasionally, but gradually decrease. At first, it ranges from 45 to 30, then from 35 to 20, and then almost suddenly W700 surrenders and shows 8 to 1 FPS. You see that? Let the laptop cool slightly, start the game again, and in 20-30 minutes the story repeats itself. This is certainly a pain in the butt, but keep in mind that you see all this after almost a half day of different loads. With all respect, for such purposes it is better to get a PC and stop killing the laptop. Therefore, even based on not very hard mockery at this machine, I can call the work of cooling system normal. Just remember that loads must have limits and do not hit hard on this laptop all day long. As for the battery, do you still expect from Windows laptop on top hardware the best battery life? If you play games or use video editing apps, my advice is to plug it to a power supply and get all performance this guy can give. Anything else is a secondary thought. If you work in Photoshop or dig through documents, laptop will last an hour and a half in performance mode. If you turn on power saving, it can give somewhat 5 to 6 hours. The advice will be to carry a charger anywhere you go and you won't trap on 0%. The final blow comes to the sound. Speakers here play with high quality and please with melody, but not loud enough. Of course, our demands are high, however, there are modern smartphones that sing louder than this guy, at least not as massive. Summarizing the stuff, can Asus Pro Art Studio Book Pro 17 get the golden medal in a race with Apple Gods of Editing? Well, it has high chances with its capabilities, adequate port set and matte 17-inch screen. Worth to remember that it's also possible to increase its storage with M2 slots. So in the end, if your conservative mind thinks that macOS is a piece of crap, buying this laptop will be a smart decision on your way to deal with graphics, videos and pictures for approximately the same amount of money. And if you like this video, then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, hitting the like button, ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!